Now it's the time for the story for all ages, and we have two stories today. First, I want to share with you a little history of our congregation, and then Barbara's going to tell you something about the origins of the UUs of coastal Georgia. So once upon a time, nearly 50 years ago, back in 1973, there were about a dozen people here in Statesboro who started meeting as Unitarian Universalists. Sadly, that did not last, but then a second effort was begun in 1985, and those folks continued meeting, and in 1990 became an official congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association. We met in rented space. Um, first, we were in the, one of the early homes was at the Botanic Garden, which was beautiful, but we did church in a box where we were having to carry around in a box our chalice and our name tags and our sign-in book, and very importantly, the coffee pot. Um, after the uh, Botanic Garden, we met in the nursing building. We, we had faculty members who were part of the congregation and they allowed us to store things there. So that was a, a, another improvement. While we were meeting in the nursing building, I invited a friend of mine who was also a sister recovering Baptist to come and share a program. And she kept coming. She was still coming when we bought land in 1999, raised money, and also were granted a Chalice Lighters Award and built our first home on East Grady Street. My friend had become very active. She um, joined, served as president for a year and then decided to retire early from her career as a college educator and went to seminary. So it was during the 12 years we were at East Grady Street that the Reverend Dr. Jane Page was called as our minister. From there, we outgrew that space, and so we accepted a gift of property that included a big metal building that had been an auto body shop. We were able to rehab the building, again by raising money in the fellowship and a, with a chalice lighter grant. And so we were able to move into the space we're occupying now. And um, I'm not able to see the screen. Are you showing the pictures, Jane? The shared screen? So hopefully you're seeing pictures of the original building at Grady Street. And then in 2015, we moved into the um, building we are now on Cypress Lake Road. We've been meeting there since 2015. There's a picture of a peace pole dedication that was done there. In 2017, we added our mind body center. And pre-COVID, that was used for yoga classes, uh, meditation group and a Tai Chi practice. We are very pleased to have been able to continue meeting over the last year, thanks to Jane and others who have made this available virtually. And we're glad to have gotten to know our friends at the sister congregation at Brunswick. And so now I invite Barbara to come and tell us about the history of UUCG. Barbara? Okay, okay. Um... Well, our congregation actually started on St. Simon's Island. Uh, this picture of our founding members was taken at the retreat um, golf center. It's now been privatized since then, but they let us meet there um, and we didn't have to pay as long as enough of us stayed for lunch. <laughs> so um, it was there that we uh, we're able to make our application to become a fellowship, and it was then that we had enough people to to do that. We first met in um, the American Legion. Uh, sometimes it was not cleaned up from the party the night before, and we would have to go to somebody's house for a service. Um, a lot of our early meetings were um, centered around food people brought food and we talked about mostly where we were gonna go next. Um, a lot of, you know, we didn't have a home. So we went, went to different places. The longest I guess was at the old uh, post office building. And now that is the Coastal Georgia Historical Society on St. Simons. Um, we stayed over here probably for three or four years. Um, then some of our members did live in Brunswick, some on Jekyll. Um, but then uh, Jack Conyers found Bill Phillips at a 
Democratic Party meeting and learned that he had been a Methodist minister and had said that the only other church he'd be willing to pastor would be a Unitarian church. So, wow, that perked up Jack's ears and um, Janet Wainick, who was very instrumental in our early, early formative years, uh, persuaded Bill to come on as our minister. Um, Bill suggested that we move to Brunswick, which was really uh, hard for some of our group to accept. Um, most of us realized that we needed to move to Brunswick to, to, to grow, to expand. And, but some didn't want to move to Brunswick and some didn't, but most of us did. Uh, after we moved to Brunswick, we, uh, Jane, you do, do that other slide. Yeah, there you go. After we moved to Brunswick, we were still in a lot of different places because we still didn't have a home. Um, Bill Van Loan had been able to get um, a loan for us from, U I guess it was an outright grant from UUA to purchase property in Brunswick. And we met with um, the architects to build a building in the activity room at St. Mark's. St. Mark's was very, very helpful to us. We also had two very outstanding options there. Mary Freeman and uh, Crystal Gibbs probably chaired the, the biggest, most uh, lucrative auction we had at St. Mark's. But in this slide, you see um, Is Rappaport. Is was our first, our first program leader. Uh, this was when we named our forum room for Is. Um, Is was um, a real <laughs> a curmudgeon, but a delightful one. Um, he died soon after this, after we named the forum for him from pancreatic cancer. The group down below is probably the largest contingent we've ever sent to General Assembly. Uh, there are about eight people. I think we were on a trip that time, but uh, the, the General Assembly was in Fort Lauderdale, so it was close by and a lot of people went from here. It's also where our chalice came from I think Ken Troboff saw it first and loved it and everybody else did too. So our big um, chalice came from that, that time. Jane came to us in 2014 um, after we were in our building. Um, Ken Troboff found uh, this building that was a law office <clears throat> and thought it might be a good place for a church. And enough of the other people did too. And so um, we bought that property and were fortunate enough to sell the lot that we had purchased over near the courthouse, the old courthouse. Um, so uh, Harlan Hambright was the person who was an architect by training but he designed this, made the, the room, the sanctuary that we now use, a high ceiling to make it more like a sanctuary. We moved into this building in oh, 2008. Uh, Bill was with us until 2010 and resigned, uh, retired actually. Um, he's now our pastor emeritus, Bill Phillips. And uh, we had another minister for a short time after that, uh, Lynn Garner. And then we were lucky enough to get Jane to come down here from Statesboro. And we were also very fortunate to have many <coughs> gifts uh, from our members. Ron Yost designed and constructed our chalice table, our lectern, and the bell table that we use. Our grand piano was a gift from Jack and Billy Conyers. Um, someday I hope we'll be able to use it again. Uh, we've always been a caring bunch. 
even when uh, we might not have um, enjoyed the person who was leading the services, we enjoyed each other and we came together. This is our 24th anniversary. We were, we signed up, that picture you saw of the group was in uh, April of 1997. So this is our 24th anniversary this year in April, so it's right on time. We've always been a caring bunch, as I said. Food has always been a large part of our congregation of gatherings. So hip, hip, hooray for Unitarian Universalist of Coastal Georgia. Thank you, Barbara. We have a third story this morning before we get into our flowers. Um, we're going to hear from Phyllis Fry will come and share with us, please, about the origins of the flower ceremony. Phyllis, can you unmute yourself and share that with us, please? I did. Um, this is from the UUA website. Um, the Unitarian Universalist Flower Communion Service, which we are about to celebrate, originated in 1923 by Dr. Norbert Chopek, founder of the modern Unitarian movement in Czechoslovakia. On the last Sunday before the summer recess of the Unitarian Church in Prague, all the children and adults participate in this con co colorful ritual, which gives concrete expression to the humanitarian affirming principles of our liberal faith. When the Nazis took control of Prague in 1940, they found Dr. Chopek's gospel of the inherent worth and beauty of every human person to be as Nazi court records show too dangerous to the right for him to be allowed to live. Dr. Kopak was sent to Dachau where he was killed the next year during a Nazi medical experiment. This gentle man suffered a cruel death, but his message of human hope and decently lives on through his flower communion, which is widely celebrated today. It is a noble and meaning filled ritual we are Thank you.
Thank you, Abby. Next, we have a meditative reading and then the sharing of our flower ceremony virtually and our class leader, Carolyn Wallace, will come and share that with us. Carolyn. Our meditation is called Fragile and Rooted by Carolyn Owen Tao. See a blossom in your mind's eye. Allow it to fill the interior of your imagination. Greater perfection of form in nature cannot be imagined. With inward gaze, absorb each wondrous fluted petal. Slide down its humid surface until you drop as Many facets. Stored within is the memory of all flowers. Marvel that this creation, while utterly fragile yet undaunted, boldly buds forth, turning resolutely toward the sun. We too shimmer with expectation, exuding our own illumination, color, pulse, and scent. Vulnerable, still we venture our lives courageously toward hope and light, at once fragile and rooted. And now we'll have a moment of silence, and then I will ring a bell. Well, the music that we, uh, the class chose to accompany the uh, flower slideshow where we all share and present our flowers is called Florette Africaine. It's um, a jazz uh, tune by Duke Ellington and we're doing the cover by Nora Jones. <laughs> 